Hey friends, welcome to this session. Thank you so much for joining us at this conference. Really excited. We've got a lot of great content and speakers today. Hopefully I'll add to that mix and give you something very practical. Before we start, my name is Kenny Jang. I'm the founder of a service called Church Butler. You can find it at www.butler.church. It's basically a service for church communicators that allows you to put social media to work for you so you can focus more on the more important things, engaging and interacting with your community online. We do that by providing social graphics, video, and training each and every single month so that you can actually, again, get off the hamster wheel or the treadmill of death of content creation and focus on what's most important, and that's community engagement. Today, um, Justin asked me to come on and share with uh, you a little bit of some of the things that we're looking forward um, into 2019, 2020. What are some of the concepts or things that we need to think about as church communicators? And so today's talk is called Netflix Nation, the four communication shifts you need to adapt to if you want your church to grow. And so it's going to be lightning fast, buckle up, uh, let's get right to it. First of all, uh, why? Why do we need to think about these culture and communication shifts? It's because culture itself is changing at such a high velocity. Churches are not not immune to everything else that's going on in society and how people are consuming content and entertainment and media, et cetera. Um, and today I'm going to show you four ways that I think we need to adapt and change and shift how we message the gospel and attract people into our communities and the unfolding story of Jesus Christ in their lives and ours. Um, so here, here's why. Media itself um, is completely um, accelerated and gone on a turbo boost in terms of transformation, evolution, and change. Uh, we've gone from a corded phone, which uh, recently my middle school son was talking um, about in a hotel that we uh, were visiting. And he said, hey, to his sister, look, it's one of those circle phones. <laughs> he was talking about a rotary phone. Um, and the fact that it was corded and attached to the wall was completely foreign to them. Obviously, today, the smartphone um, is something that has replaced all communications. Many of you don't even have a landline in your house anymore. In fact, probably most of you. We have gone through so much change and evolution that it's crazy. One of the big things that is affecting us is this notion of time shifting. Uh, we saw it with TiVo first and DVRs that we're now able to consume content on our own time schedules, not based on what mass broadcast media um, is dictating in terms of when we're supposed to watch it. Place shifting is the next thing. You're seeing that first with Slingbox, but now with YouTube, Netflix, Hulu TV, et cetera, et cetera, you're able to consume what you want to watch, where you want to watch it. Um, it's completely changing the landscape of dynamics, and churches, again, are not immune to this pressure. Nichification. Uh, we started with right uh, broadcast TV. Everyone was watching must-see TV on Thursday nights. Um, and then the water cooler talk was about just the one or two programs that rose to the top, cable TV, satellite TV, internet, um, and all on-demand services now is increasing the nichification of how people consume content, how people find, discover, and follow content providers um, is a, all, all brand new to publishers uh, today. And this is something, again, churches are not immune to. Last one is shared experiences. Um, you see it with these large, big productions, AGT, American Idol, uh, reality TV, et cetera, has started the ball game, but we're going, going even further and further uh, with shared experiences. Again, something that churches are not immune to if you want to stay relevant and in front of the people, because this is now an attention economy. And so, uh, again, remember, back in the day, it used to be everyone watched the same person on the same program across the entire country. Um, and now um, we've got so many different choices in front of us as consumers. And this is something that you have to come to grips with, not just your pastor and the preaching and the church format, but just how you message, how you communicate, how you think that your people are receiving the message, both 
in your community and those that have yet to join your community out there, the people, the neighbors, the residents, the friends outside of your church's ecosystem itself. So lots of stuff to think about. Um, at the end of the day, what's happened is the transfer has become a media landscape that we need to grapple with. And that's going to force a lot of things on how we actually go about our business of communications and media. Um, this is just a, a milestone this past year, if you recall. The, the value of Netflix surpassed the value of the Disney empire in the stock market this past year. That's just, it's mind-blowing that a something that was a startup just a couple of years ago in relative time um, is now surpassing the entire Disney empire with its um, entertainment and amusement parks and just how it's ingrained in our culture in America, you know what? Something like Netflix can surpass it. Um, it means that there's monumental uh, shifts going on in the landscape that we need to take take into consideration. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to go into a full high tech church mode, but it does mean that you need to think about time shifting and the church as one of the first things that we need to grapple with. And what I mean by that: Sunday attendance. Um, it's Sunday morning, as the only time that worship services is available to the community, is something that we have to start to think about and have a discussion with, I think, from my point of view. Um, it's no longer that everyone has a must-see TV Thursday night program. You have content available everywhere. Same thing. People have so many different options for leisure and media and activities and recreation. And um, Sunday morning ha has a lot of competition now. You can see it by the decline of attendance in the North American church. What are we going to do uh, to battle that decline? And it's not just force everyone to come back and carve out Sunday morning. I think you gotta start to think about um, how do we have worship experiences that reach and also involve our community in maybe different ways, but also at different times. These are the types of questions that we really need to start to think about. Place shifting is the second thing I talked about. Um, that is something that is obviously something uh, technology has allowed and it's just going to get better and better and better and, and have a real alternative. We're now seeing at conferences that speakers are coming in via hologram and having full interactive sessions on panels. And so it's no longer just this novelty on stage that everyone's seeing, but it actually is becoming a really functional, practical, interactive um, option for people. Place shifting itself is something that's going to need to be done right now one of the options is podcasting um, podcasting is at an all-time high largely because i think it's because of the um, content binging culture that netflix has created people are looking for more content more good content but also uh, the on-demand streaming services have trained our people to be able to consume content in so many different ways and places that if the church is not trying to figure out how to reach people where they are, um, I think that there's a huge loss there, a huge gap. So podcast is one of them. Um, TV apps is another one um, that your TVs, your monitors are now smart TVs uh, wherever you go. It's pretty much by default at this point. And so having TV apps allows you to bring the church experience again to where the people are. And so you're gathering places are starting to become distributed. Uh, they're starting to be non-centralized. Uh, what do you do with that? How is the church, how is your church grappling with that and meeting the needs of the people? Because people need worship. People need spiritual content. People need discipleship. They need the connections and the technology is changing the habits and the culture and, and the dynamics of how people actually look at all of these things um, is the church following suit, taking advantage of being able to show up, be present, and engage and attract new audiences where they've never been able to before? Third shift that we talked about is shared experiences. Now, what can we do for shared experiences? There's tons of stuff that we are starting to see experiment and come out uh, online right now. Church online is a great option. It used to be when I first became a church online pastor at Liquid Church Online, uh, people were questioning the actual validity of that format. Nowadays, you see more and more. In fact, it's almost a default that churches are at least streaming their services 
or making their services available on demand. But live worship, interactive church services is something that is starting to become um, much more standard. It's flourishing. It's becoming a real option for so many churches, especially because the technology cost um, is coming down so rapidly. This is something that you guys to take care of. Now, even if you don't go that far, um, you have things like live streaming that's available to you right now, uh, such as Facebook Live, YouTube Live, um, Vimeo is going live. Uh, there's so many options today that you can do, whether it be one of the main platforms or third-party services that are targeting churches as their partners um, and their audiences. L last one that I'll just um, flag here is the VR church, virtual reality. Um, we have at least one virtual reality church uh, that has grown in significance. Pastor DJ Soto has um, also spawned off um, different worship services for um, different geographies. Um, and we've seen a, an online baptism at uh, the virtual church. We've seen um, volunteers and an elder structure. We've seen preaching that has been taken on by guest preachers because the infrastructure, the ecosystem, volunteers, people are serving in a real and genuine capacity that it's not just a one-to-many, it's a peer-to-peer -peer and it's a, it's a real, authentic human community that's coming together for the church. I always say when I was a, a church online pastor at Liquid Church, it's that it's not virtual church. And this is a nuance that I really think you need to, to pay attention to. It's not virtual church. It's not virtual people. It's real church using a virtually mediated channel for connections. Completely different if you think about it in those two ways. Um, and that's why I think virtual reality, it's not going to take over the world, but I think it's going to start to flourish. You're going to see other expressions of church in VR as uh, as we move, fo move forward, as technology comes down. Like Facebook came out with the Oculus Go uh, headset, which is only $199 now. Um, it's going to come down further and further. Um, as that technology becomes democratized and available broadly, you'll see much more expressions of faith and spirituality in communities like this VR church um, available online uh, for people to experiment and actually attract non-churchgoers, people who have no experience with the church, and bringing them into the fold, introducing them to Jesus Christ, um, our faith and religion, and other faith communities, even locally where they are. Um, the last one is nitrification in the church that we talked about. And there's so many different ways that we can think about it. I think the first one um, may or may not be the best expression of it, where we're going after celebrity preachers and, and each one has their own following. That's one way of nitrification. I would challenge you as communicators to push the envelope a little further than that, not fall into that trap, and try to figure out are there other ways and expressions to look at sub-audiences across our communities and cultures, whether it be something like a cowboy church, which is real and alive, um, that is trying to um, really address the needs of a specific niche community. Um, ethnic churches is another one. Uh, there's so many different ways to slice and dice a community that if you are able to serve a specific niche, uh, it's easy to attract and really expose them, again, to the, the great message that we have in the gospel. So um, those are four ways that I think that we as church communicators really need to be challenged with and start to think um, in a radical way uh, because this is almost time for another reformation of a digital sort. We know that the Holy Spirit works in pixels. Everything uh, made by God is for God and his glory. Um, and that's where I'm going to end the conversation here for here today uh, because it's a lot to think about, but I want you to spur the conversation locally but and online uh, I don't want to give you all the answers. I want us as a community to start to explore, to dream, and to really articulate what the future of the, the digital church can really be. So I, I, I encourage you to reach out to me um, and think about uh, the difference between the new, new, o, new OS and the old OS um, and talk about what are the new things that we can actually dream and build together as church communicators. Um, thank you so much for listening to me today. Reach out to me online um, in the Facebook group and, and the communities in the messaging and chat. Hope to interact with you. If you want to reach out to me again, you can do that at kenny at butler.church or you can reach out 
on the website, www.butler.church, um, or on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is Kenny Jang as the handle. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to meeting and connecting with um, more of you online, in person, in conferences. And um, just remember, be blessed and be a blessing.